to my sound now. Stupid microphone. Sorry, bear with me. Yeah, it's way behind. <laughs> Okay, we have sound. Perfect. Sorry about that. And so again, my name is Julie. <clears throat> I'm the owner and founder of Lady Faultize Apothecary. So you're either watching this on my uh, Facebook page or my YouTube channel. So wherever you're watching from, thank you for joining and welcome. We're here today to talk about Ostara and the full moon in Virgo. So we've got a lot to cover and uh, I just spent the last five minutes playing with the microphone again um so we're gonna hop right in here um i'm gonna just smudge it just a teeny tiny little bit oh, that's a big leaf i don't want all that uh, now i've made a mess all right so i just have a little leaf here i'm gonna smudge real quick so um ostara let's start with that is on sunday and it is the um, spring equinox and so it is when uh, we go back from um, darker days to lighter days and warmer days um, and um, during this time you usually hear a lot about Bridget um, if you are uh, following deities or anything like that uh, you hear a lot about Bridget in the uh, oh that spark landed right on there on the whole bundle <laughs> um, so during this time you hear a lot, like I said, in springtime you hear a lot about Bridget, um, and she usually rules um, the uh, warmer, so she rules spring and summer where the crone rules um, fall and winter. So you probably hear a lot about her, but um, Ostara is a um, goddess of spring, and so her whole um, thing is rebirth and growth which is exactly what we have right now in springtime. So she, she's all about um, the, the um, flowers coming back and the animals having their babies and um, all of that type of stuff. So um, she was often honored um, during the springtime. If you notice, Ostera is very close uh, to Easter. Um, Ostera was said to have had a bird companion and um, the bird companion, um, for whatever reason, wasn't working out. <laughs> and uh, this is a really short version of the, the story. Um, and so she turned her bird into a rabbit. Um, and during the springtime, um, the rabbit would lay eggs um, from being a bird still, the, in, in honor of being a bird. Um, so that is where your Easter bunny and your Easter eggs come from um, is that little story. So, but really, um, when you think about it, um, rabbits and eggs are very much symbols of fertility. Um, rabbits, um, if anybody's had rabbits, you know, they know they, they multiply quite easily. And eggs is, um, again, that birth um, of growth um, so that's again all very much related to the springtime of what um, our ancestors would have been you know praying for is a lot of growth and the, the crops to be good and the, their livestock to you know reproduce and all of that stuff so um, so that's a really short cliff note of <laughs> Ostara um, I posted a couple of other videos um, on the event so if you want to learn a little bit more about it um, there's some other videos there they're older ones so if I talk about events or things coming up that's those are not valid um, but the information about Ostara um, is um, you know still good in there so um, if you wanted to set up um, some stuff for your Ostara altar uh, some of the things that you could have are um, some flowers um, so you could put some violets, um, which are representative of fertility. Um, you could also put some lavender um, or rose. 
And so I have um, my three little dried rosebuds that I just stole off my altar. Um, I will put them back right after this video. So um, those stay on there. Um, you could also um, put some crystals. So for Asara, a good one is um, some Desert Rose. And the camera is not going to pick that up very good for you. It's actually quite pretty. Here you get a little bit of it right there. All right, so Desert Rose. And that's to help um, eliminate the old and clear uh, the path for the new. So again, that um, rebirth there is represented. Um, so you could also put uh, some um, honey on there if you wanted a little bowl of honey i have a candle on my altar that's a, a honey candle um so it's got honey at the bottle bottom and the candle is on the top it's kind of neat looking but um so i have that on there you could use some eggs uh, this is one that i put on my altar during ostara You could also um, put any kind of bright flowers. So, um, you know, anything that's going to bring lots of color in um, would be really great. Um, you could put a rabbit. And I do have a, ra a little stuffed rabbit around here somewhere, but I don't know where he's gone. He's on a little adventure. Um, you could put... Um, A yellow candle I, I was like yellow candy I'm like why would you put yellow candy why did I write that a yellow candle on for Ostara um, in the other videos that I shared one of them was making the Ostara candle um, and this was one of the ones that I had made a couple years ago so I'm actually gonna burn this one this year um, and uh, start a new one because it's kind of dusty it's you know kind of getting not so great looking so I'm gonna go ahead and burn this one down um, I'll dismantle and save whatever I can um, but again you'll see there's the roses in there um, there's some the bright flowers are in there um, and it had oil all over it, it doesn't really smell anymore um, there's little crystals underneath um, but can't see those either but they are there and then of course a nice little butterfly that give it a little extra touch there but yeah I'm gonna burn that one down this year <clears throat> the other thing that I have is um, my sister-in-law actually makes candles and uh, so she has made this one that I got I don't know if, and it says spring equinox so that's going on my altar they're very nice candles they've got the crackle wick and then um, some little gemstones in there as well and uh, <clears throat> this one's got orange and bergamot which is one of my favorites uh, it's got some jasmine and some lilac and then it's got some patchouli and some musk in there so it's very nice very nice smell to it all right <clears throat> the other thing you can put <clears throat> sorry I forgot my glass of water again is seeds any kinds of seeds apple seeds uh, sunflower seeds anything like that um, you can put on the, your altar just sprinkle them around or put a little dish of them whatever you feel called to do and lastly I think for Ostara is um, you could also work with a tarot if you wanted and um, the high priestess would be a really good one and um, I do not have a traditional tarot deck. You'll see that my pictures are very much different <laughs> than a normal deck. But um, so you can work with her and I will try to remember to get a picture up there for you. And <clears throat> all right. So quick, like I said, it was really quick about Ostara, um, but uh, I'm trying to cover two things in one video, which is very, very hard for me to do. If you have any questions on Ostara, 
or need more information or want to add information or anything like that, please feel free to put that in the comments or send me a message. Um, or like I said, you can go back and watch those other videos that are um, in the comments as well for the event on Facebook page. Um, on YouTube, I will try to post them so that they're linked somehow for you as well. <clears throat> so, all right. Moving over to the full moon in Virgo, uh, which is today. I'm oh, sorry. Astara is, I said the spring equinox, but it's on Sunday, if I didn't say that. Um, full moon is tonight, though. Um, so, full moon is in Virgo. And Virgo, um, I talk about Virgo all the time. Um, my husband is a Virgo. Um, so, Virgos are very much about um, being in service. Um, um, they want to help people. Um, so they're very, um, usually very crafty people, handy people, like handymen. Um, my husband, like if I'm like, I need this, he can go out in the garage and make it and bring it back and be like, here you go. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, sometimes they're healers as well. So, um, different ways of being in assistance for people. Um, like I said, they could be a crafter, an artisan, uh, they could be a healer. Um, they could just be somebody who just is very um that you know that go-to person whenever you got a problem you go to them and th they're gonna be right there to help you fix it um so um <clears throat> virgo energy is very much about keeping it all together um they are very dedicated and um hard working so all of that energy is going to be coming through um for us right now and i find it really um a good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A good combination. That's not what I'm trying to say. But um, the two energies of Ostara and the full moon, I think, are, are really well suited, compatible. I'm not sure what the word is I'm looking for. But um, with the Ostara uh, in spring of being all about, um, you know, regrowth and uh, growth in general, um, and then we have all this energy from Virgo of being hardworking and being dedicated. You know, I, I think it's really good energy to, to pair up together. <coughs> um, Virgos are also very critical thinkers and they're very organized. Um, usually my Virgo is not so organized, but um, <laughs> he's organized in his way, which is very different than my way, but that's okay. Um, they're very devoted and they're, they can be very patient, um, you know, and if you're a Virgo and that doesn't, um, describe you, it is most likely because you, of where your other placements are in your chart. Um, so that's just like, a uh, again, a Cliff Notes version of a Virgo. Um, if you want to learn more about Virgos, I have a video that I did, uh, videos that I did about all this, uh, Zodiac signs. And you can find those on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, But again, if it doesn't describe you in your Virgo, it's most likely because of where your other placements are in your chart. Um, and if you want more information about that, you can contact me and I can help you with that as well. Um, so kind of combining the energies of Ostara and Virgo, um, really um, take the next couple of, well, the full moons tonight. So take today and um, really consider um, what your options are going forward. Um, gather any kind of information you might be needing. Do some research that you might be needing to do. Um, whatever it is. And um, then kind of sit down and think about where you're going. What you want to do. What, what are your needs um, and what are your wants and kind of make a plan of this spring what is your rebirth going to look like what is your growth going to look like for you what is it that you want to be um, better at or different at or um, you know uh, whatever um, for going forward and this um, you know because spring um, is really the the start of the seasons for me um, as well as it's also the start of the zodiac sign so moving into Aries 
is um, the beginning of the zodiac sign. So Pisces is the last one and then Aries is the first one. So we're going to be starting over there. So we've got a lot of um, transitioning over to starting over New Year, even though it's not the same as the calendar New Year. Um, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, so really think about what it is that you, um, you really want to be doing. Um, what are your wants? What are your needs? Um, do your research, gather information, talk with some friends, talk with family members. Um, I don't know if you're looking like to go to school or change jobs or something, have some conversations <clears throat> with people, um, that can help get you some information for that as well. And really spend, um, some time considering what it is that you really, like I said, what is your rebirth and your growth going to look like? So, and then you've got that nice boost of that Virgo energy in there to help you get all of that done. Um, so, all right. Um, so, I don't have my bay leaves. <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a minute. So, um, for your altar for full moon, um, some of the things you might want to work with. Um, and again, I don't have two separate ones. I have one altar. It's jam packed full of stuff. Um, I swap stuff out, um, as I feel I want to, or need to, or for different holidays or different events and stuff. And I, I move things around and swap things out. Um, but I don't have a full moon altar and an austere altar. It's all one altar that has all my stuff on it. You do you. If you feel you want two, go for it. If you want four, go for it. You know, whatever you feel like doing. But so one of the things you can work with um, for um, the full moon is this Virgo full moon is bay leaves. And um, this is something that I had made um, at um, in bulk. And it has still been on my altar. Um, I just grabbed it for today's video. And so um, I guess I'll steal my bay leaves <laughs> out of here because I forgot to grab the, the new ones that I just bought. But yeah, so this is representation of um, the plants coming through the snow. So a um, great little thing to put on your altar at uh, the springtime, in bulk springtime. So, um, but I will steal my three little bay leaves out of there for <laughs> And then I will put new ones back in there. All right. So we have our bay leaves for our releasing because we're going to release at um, full moon. And honestly, I don't really know um, what I'm going to be releasing. Um, let's get our jar here. So I have my jar. Take our cover off. Um So really thinking about what it is that my wants are, my needs are, and uh, really where I want to grow, and then relate that into releasing something. So I'm going to release um, what no longer serves me. That's very little messy writing, but what no longer serves me is going in there. I'm going to release fear. There's always that uh, worry and fear of what might happen. If I do this, will I be okay? Is this, how is this going to affect other people if I do this? Um, so I'm going to uh, release some fear. And the other thing I'm going to release is uh, doubt. often doubting myself. Can I do this? Am I going to be successful? Am I going to be any good at this? Are people going to like me? <laughs> um, so uh, doubt is going to go in there. So those are all things that are related to releasing things to help me grow. <laughs> so we'll put our jar back up here. All right. 
And so a couple more things about Virgo, and then I have to head off to my muggle job. Um, so again, back to altar. Some of the things that you can work with on your altar was the bay leaves. Um, so some other things you could do is put some juniper berries. And again, you can just sprinkle them around or you could put a little bowl um, or you could just put three little berries. You could put one little berry. It doesn't really matter. You know, you can do it whatever you feel. So some juniper berries would be really good on your altar right now. And again, the rosebuds. So um, the rosebuds serve for the Ostera and the Virgo full moon. The rosebuds work for both of those. So um, that's really great. Um, if you wanted to put some stones, besides we worked with the desert rose for Ostara, if you wanted to work with some other pieces, um, you could work with some bloodstone. You could work with some malachite. A little piece I don't know if you can see it but you could work with some malachite or you could work with some jasper so malachite is about transformation and bloodstone is really good for healing um, so you can work with some of those um, if you wanted to have an affirmation for this full moon um, a good one for, uh, again, the combination of the Virgo energy and the Ostara energy is, um, this is actually an affirmation that is um, for Virgos, um, but it really fit really well with this um, energy of this time of year. And it's, I am open to growth. So just write that on a sticky note and stick it on your bathroom mirror and, uh, you know, say it in your head or out loud or whatever, brush your teeth and say it in your head. Um, I'm a big person for um, multitasking, things like that when you're doing silly things. <laughs> um, like when you're, you know, stirring your coffee, think about um, the love and intention that you're putting into your coffee. Um, so like I said, brushing your teeth is a great time to do your affirmations. Um, you know, morning and night. Uh, so put that sticky note on the bathroom mirror. Um, if you wanted to um, do a nice little ritual <coughs> for the full moon, um, this would be a really good time to do a little ritual ceremony around planting some seeds. Um, I can't go outside and plant seeds yet. I still have way too much snow. Um, but you could, you know, plant some seeds in a little cup or something that you'll take out uh, later. Um, so planting seeds would be a nice little ritual that you could do. Um, you could also do a, a candle like I did. So you could dress a candle, um, you know, decorate it all up and make that your little ritual. Um, or you could make it and then use it in your ritual, whatever, um, again, you feel called to do. Um, if you wanted to make yourself a nice little tea for the full moon, um, some of the ones that I would recommend would be uh, lavender, raspberry, and some lemongrass. So uh, you could work with them individually or you could pair them together, whichever um, you prefer. Um, I have lavender and I have raspberry. I'm not sure if I have any lemongrass, um, but I will check that out and make myself a little cup of tea tonight. Um, some oils you might want to be working with um, and or scents. You don't have to necessarily work with oils. You could just work with the scents. Um, so if you got scentsy things that smell like that or an air freshener or whatever that smells like that, that's fine too. But um, I just like the essential oils, preferably for myself, because they're more natural than those other things. But if you had some candles or something, you know, that smelled like that, <laughs> um, you could definitely um, burn a candle as well. So some of the scents that you or oils that you might want to work with for this Virgo full moon is oak moss, um, amorous, uh, again, lavender, uh, vanilla, um, champaca, or some frankincense. So um, I was just thinking, sorry, my brain went somewhere. Um, for my tea tonight, I think I will do lavender, raspberry, and if I don't have lemongrass, I think I'll put some rose in it. <laughs> Make my tea that way. So, 
All right, so I think I've covered everything except for the tarot card for the full moon. And um, again, it's it, it, the way everything falls together, um, I really don't think it can be a coincidence. Um, but I, I just, it blows my mind the way things just all fit together and, and fall in place. But, um, so I was trying to find a tarot card that was related to the Virgo energy. And, um, one of the cards that came up for a Virgo is the Hermit. And I thought that was a perfect card to work with because the Hermit in the tarot deck is the first card. If you don't know the story of the tarot deck, um, basically, as the cards progress, it's the story of the hermit as the hermit grows and learns and becomes all these other things. Um, so the hermit is the first card in the um, tarot deck. So <laughs> in the tarot journey, um, the hermit is where the um, story starts. So I thought that was perfect for again it's so it's a card related to virgo energy but it's all about the beginning and the growth and the changes that are going to become um the hermit and what the hermit is going to become so again really nice tie-in to that ostara energy so all right so those are some of the things you can work with put on your altar do whatever you want um you know i like to take pictures of the cards and um, make them my screensavers on my phone, you know, while I want to work with that energy. Um, you can just, um, I usually place these up on my little, I have a little space here that they go right there. Um, you can't see it, but they sit there <laughs> until I'm done working with them. Um, you could, like I said, if you don't have a tarot deck, that's perfectly fine. Go on the computer and um, find a picture. And like I said, save it as a screensaver or print it out or do whatever you want. Draw your own hermit. That'd be a really nice project. So, all right. So that's going to wrap it up for me for today. That was really quick. Um, I didn't go over quite as much astrology <clears throat> as I normally do. But again, that was because I was trying to cover um, two different things in one video. So I kind of had to shorten everything up a little bit. But if you really want some more information or have some questions, um, certainly feel free to put it in the comments or reach out to me and private message me, uh, whatever you're more comfortable with. And um, so I hope everybody has a really great weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday morning at seven for our weekly um, astrology forecast. And um, enjoy the full moon. Hopefully it's nice enough that we can get outside a little bit. So, And as always, remember to be kind. Your kindness is not only going to improve your day, it's going to improve somebody else's day. And it could potentially change someone's life for the better. So, And it doesn't cost us anything. Thanks, guys. Lots of love. <laughs>